All right, all right, all aboard, all aboard the bus. All right, Esper, Esper party bus. This has been a fan favorite. It's definitely a favorite, a favorite of mine. The bus for the uninitiated here is the lumbering, lumbering battlement. Gets bigger for every creature you pile onto it. And then we have a bunch of wonderful creatures in this deck that do different effects when they enter the battlefield. And then we have Siren, excuse me, Siren's Roost here to blink the bus in and out. If you get a combination of one to three buses and one to two hostage takers or zero to two hostage takers, you get an infinite loop giving you lots of into the battlefield effects, which can kill them directly with the vampire or give us lots of life and discard their hand with the bell haunt or draw us cards or give us treasures, etc. Had a tip there. Thanks for making my day-to-day -day work grind easier with your streams and YouTube channel. The content is great. You've made me daily viewable. Thanks for the support, Harley Quinn. I really appreciate that. Uh, if there's a deck in my queue you'd like to see a little bit sooner, I always encourage people to send the donations to bump things up. So feel free to drop me a DM and let me know if there's something in there you'd like to see a little bit sooner. All right, let's uh, let's dive into some matches here. This, one, this one's been a lot of fun. This deck's a sweet example of like, there's an infinite combo in this deck, but this isn't an infinite combo deck. Like this is a mid-range deck playing mostly reasonable magic cards that happens to like backdoor into a combo some of the time. There is no foil bus, unfortunately. I mean, I don't I don't think that's strictly true, all the same. Like, especially with like what I do, and I'm definitely not alone in playing viewer submitted deck lists. So, like, sure, getting to Mythic is reasonable, but like, if you look at the deck list I'm playing, I'm not like well, I'm not I'm not a tryhard streamer, right? Like, we're not sitting here playing green red aggro and soul time mid-range and all these other decks 40 hours a week, right? I'm playing I'm playing Esper Party Bus and and Just Kai Niv and Grixis Pirates. We cry hard, not try hard. That's a that's an excellent quote. Alright, we got we got Bell Haunt into Sirens Ruse, so let's do it. Nah, complete, completely disagree. I think if you're perpeting yourself or putting yourself forward as this spike competitive player, like if you're, if the goal of your stream is competitive magic all the time, then not getting to mythic probably calls into question your, your ability to make those claims. They're like the people that write competitive magic articles who have like never top aided a major tournament, even though they show up to them constantly, like, those types of things. I think if you're that type of player, it's not unreasonable. But like, if you're someone like me or Saffron Olive or Knox or like one of the many streamers that like aren't focused on just competitive play and are mostly playing magic to have fun, I think not getting to Mythic really isn't that big of a deal. Elliot, thanks for the tip. Good morning. Love the Greenwood Warrior build. Went 10 and 2 in matches last night. Solidly back to plateau. Actually dropped one collision, one dragon, and one harpooner for three status statue. Yeah, that card's sweet. Especially with um, the first strike creatures, it's very powerful. I think three status statue might be slightly heavy if you can't cast the statue half of it. But I think some number of them are definitely very reasonable. So we're down to 16 here. We're going down to at least 14. But then the Sailor of Memes here is going to get gonna get his blocking on. And then we've got some Bell Haunts lined up. So we're, gonna, we're in an okay spot here. You're not wrong, Foxicon. Is 
It's like, I would, you would hear that pretty constantly, like, because I, when I played a lot of competitive magic, I played on the SCG Open series, and there were lots of really, really egotistical people that would like to put down people that played on the slightly smaller series were like, oh, they're just big f and it's super easy, anyone can do it. It's like, well, if this is really as easy as you're making it out to be, like, they pay an okay amount of money in these tournaments, you should probably be showing up every weekend if you genuinely believe you could do this every weekend. And then just like, people are like, oh, no, no, no. Now, I, com I completely disagree with you, Olis. In fact, um, streams that tend to focus purely on competitive focus magic tend to be a lot less successful than streams that otherwise focus on entertaining content. If, if competitive focus magic was the thing that drew in watchers on Twitch, I would never have more viewers than any of the MPL players because it's almost a certainty that all of those MPL players are better Magic players than I am, personally. So, they put Experimental Frenzy into play here, which makes the cards in their hand a little bit less important here. Alright, would you like to attack? Alright, so what I what do I want to do here? I have a couple of sequencing decisions. The question is how quickly do I want to get do I want to get the bus into play? Yeah, of course we're playing the bus in the ranked queue. I think I just want to get the bell haunt down. I think my sequence here is probably going to be bell haunt into sailor plus dust legion zealot next turn into battlement plus sirens ruse the following turn. They have, they have Runaway Steam Kim plus the Frenzy here, which is a little bit scary. If they if they hit a good series here, we could definitely get run down. That being said, they didn't have a land last turn, so hopefully there's going to be a pocket of lands coming up to keep them from going too crazy. When's the next Narset League? Uh, not sure offhand. Kind of surprised they didn't pop mana off of this before playing the Gitu Lava Runner off the top of their deck. I mean, I have copies of Mortify in my deck, but I don't have access to any of them right now, Dopies. If they attack with everything, I'm going to go block, block, block. If they attack with just this... I think I'm going to block it with everything. And now, like, this does potentially let them mow down both my bell haunts, which makes my lumbering battlement worse, but I think it's important to take the runaway steamkin off the table.
Yeah, the, the modern queue is not that long. In fact, the deck queue in general is kind of short at the moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I guess there's 18 in there still. The uh, the week before the week before the next set releases, I'm gonna be doing a couple of modern only days. So this is this is letting them cut through my bell hunt here, which sucks, but it is what it is. No, I don't think so. I think they want to take my bell haunts off the table just so they can, like, start attacking with their 2-2s. Two that doesn't seem unreasonable. Because, like, as long as the bell haunts are in play, they can't meaningfully attack with these 2-2s. Two two hey, Pi Guy, thanks for the 10 months. Hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic uh, Wednesday wherever you're at. my block was great it might have been right to just chump with my sailor losing those bell haunts makes the slumbering battlement significantly worse and like now they drew another steamkin this if this frenzy ends up being above average for them we're gonna be in a lot of trouble even just average we might need it to actually just be below average what if we're gonna see this firebrand pop off so they can play a spectacle card here Light them up. They're on fire. Oh, ho, 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 do, 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 do. All right, the fact that they played that land implies that they don't have cards they can cast off the top of their deck unless it's a Goblin Chain Whirler. I suspect we'll see Wizard Lightning axe my Seeker Squire here. Oh, they're just going to cast two spells. That makes sense. It's weird. If they're casting this lightning strike off the top of their deck, it's definitely a mistake to play that mountain. Because if there's a mountain underneath this lightning strike, they then can't keep going through their deck with, uh, with Experimental Frenzy. So small, small missequency mistake on their part for sure. I think if they attack with these, do I double block one of them? Do I, do I bounce or do I double block? Am I willing to give them two ball, a two ball to like take a thing off the table? I think I am. They could technically still keep casting things off the top of their deck. Yeah, because they have the Steamkin here. So if they have another spell, they weren't punished for their bad sequencing on there. Light up the stage. I mean, not really. Like, it's, it's kind of the same whether I double block or not. Bell Haunt's a good pickup. But a stop on their upkeep. So they have an uh, instant speed burns ball on top here.
We have another land on top. Have another land on top. Morning, see unit. I think I'm just gonna jump here. Going to four here, but I have Siren's Ruse on Bell Haunt available. What's the difference between a bottle, a fish, and a a in a piano, a, a fish and a bottle of glue? You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. Where's the where's the glue come in there? I don't understand. I feel like I feel like I've missed part of the joke. I knew you'd get stuck on that. <sighs> We're dead. Why are we dead? What did I, what did I do to die? I mean, like, we were maybe dead forever ago. I don't know. If we're going to concede at this point, we should have conceded on turn, on turn four when they cast the Experimental Frenzy. So, like, at that point, though, Greg, like, you're not really contributing to the discussion, though. You're just, like, you're saying, like, we should concede, but you're saying we're not saying we should concede. So you're just, like, complaining that we're likely dead. So, like, how is, how is that helpful? Definitely want the moment of cravings. I want the Kayas. Um, I want the cast downs. Yeah, probably. Killing... Killing a, a what's his face? Steamkin's pretty useful. And this card's not very good against the aggro deck, and this card's kind of slow. I think Contempt's too slow. This is definitely a matchup where we traded the fourth Mortify in the sideboard for a Contempt. This is definitely a matchup hurt by that. It's possible that the second, the second cast down should be the fourth Mortify. Yeah, but, like, Nexus of Fate, there's a lot more waiting involved than, like, what's going on there. Like, 
Next is a fate. Wait, waiting to die to next is a fate. Greg is a is a different degree. Like waiting to die to next is a fate takes as long as that entire game took a lot of the time. That's pretty pretty big difference. In like waiting to see if they have another burn spell, or like are gonna hit a couple of lands in a row off the top of their deck and give us a chance to get back into it. Like, again, like, the the concessions to Nexus of Fate before you're long dead is the the fact that it's going to take them, like, 5 to 10 minutes to actually, like, click through actually killing you. Not gonna lie, I'm a little sorry for turning Chad into a dad joke, Menagerie. Eh, this game's fine. Two, four, five. Poor little bell haunt. We're gonna put you over here in the ugly corner. This card, this card would be such a good, a good full art too. Like, can you imagine like the stuff coming off of its bottom here? It just would just be like all shimmery, shiny. Thinking about it, I'm a little bit more upset that it doesn't have a full art option. The spirit fart. My full art jank decks, thanks. color combos is the party bus come in we played mardu bus a little bit but i wasn't i wasn't really impressed with it compared to this build esper is definitely my preferred why is the mortify picture move in hand when the rest doesn't so if the cards have an animation that isn't just them zooming around they move while they're in your hand so a lot of the animated cards don't do anything except you, when you mouse, the perspective changes as you mouse over them. Whereas Mortify, the perspective changes too, but it also shimmers. So there's, a, there's a few cards that have the shimmer like that. I would like to go to 20. Thanks. Rhythm of the buses. Rhythm of the buses. Next turn, we'll probably shock and play vampire and then gain three. Start pressuring them out of the game here quickly. Any, any game where they don't have a Steamkin plus Frenzy, I feel like we're pretty solidly ahead in this matchup. Which I think means there should be a fourth Mortify in my sideboard. I think I'm going to swap the second cast down to a fourth Mortify. After, uh, after we're done with this match. Yeah, it is just quite fantastic. And like this deck has enough game against aggro with all the other all the other life gain. It's okay if it doesn't have we don't have as many two mana removal spells. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> I like the two people in a row just like, I always think Bellhot has flying. Does does not does not fly, does not have foil. It's basically the worst, worst case scenarios of everything. Sorry, sorry, focus, focus, focusing. Maybe I'm supposed to not block there. Maybe I'm just supposed to take the hit and deal six to them. I'll take your last card, please, and three of your finest hit points. Experimental frenzy. Opponent has decided they would like to get off of our wild ride. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm happy with how I sideboarded. Like I said, just wanna wanna turn one of these into one of these after after we're done with this match. We threw the opponent under the bus. Yep. Under the bell haunt at the very least. Turns out having a bunch of things that read 3-4 coming to play game 3 life. Kind of decent against the deck full of lightning strikes. <laughs> That's great, Strumpet Eater. A, A plus fantastic line. I think conservative predictions like that are fine. I think the noob to Balt will likely see play as a sideboard card in red decks to prevent life gain. That I think that card's more than reasonable. In in that aspect, the the floor on it is relatively high. I would have minus the Kaya that turn. I think. I think I would have down ticked and cracked them for six. I think it's pretty reasonable. Kaya is decent. I've got blockers on two. If I don't draw an untapped land, I'll probably go Squire into Squire. Sorry, Battle Bus. We got to put you over here in the ugly corner. Yeah, the fact that they don't have a one drop is very good for us. They also mulliganed and scryed bottom, so maybe they're going to have a stumble game. 
Yeah, magic. Welcome to Magic the Gathering. Enjoy your stay, opponent. I'm gonna bend that. I think I want higher impact cards than that one. I played a Curse Catcher in the sideboard list of the Pod Bomb list, and it was kind of hot thoughts. Curse Catcher is strictly worse than Judges Familiar would be in that slot. And I think playing a Judges Familiar is fine. Judges, Judges Familiar is a card I've played before. It's like okay with Court of Calling. Not good, but okay. These are my two threes. There are many like them, but these ones are mine. The fact that I've put two creatures in my bin here too means that Kaya has four life that she gets to gain, which is pretty reasonable. Outside of them sticking a frenzy and running away with things, we're in a pretty good spot here. I assume they're going to attack. I believe this attack indicates they have a Goblin Chain Whirler, but I think I'm fine with that. It means I just play Land Cast Down next turn. They don't have any instants in their bin, so I'm going to go ahead and attack with this. If they had even one instant or sorcery in there, I'd probably leave this back to play around the, the one drop that gets haste. That's pretty punishing. That is pretty punishing for us. I think I'm just going to play a 6-7 out here. This is definitely not a card that was on my radar. This is my fatty boom. Your turn. Yeah, that attack was probably the first attack was probably bad. This is so punishing, though. I agree, Duralek. In general, this card is not good against creature-based strategies. But, alas, here we are. The bus, the bus has Vigilance, though, so, you know, there's a chance. If they want to get super aggressive, we might see them, like, spend double burn spell on this. Which I wouldn't really complain about, I don't think. Gets right to block. You get like double skewered or skewered lightning strike. I'm a little sad though. Maybe I'm supposed to wait a turn. I don't know. Leaving them another token seems bad though. Alright, there's a lightning strike. So if they have a skewer in their hand, this lumbering battlement is dead. I think we have a way to give the bus trample. Nah, I don't think so. I think you just go wide or eventually infinite combo them. So we're flooding out and they've unstumbled here. If they if they have a experimental frenzy, we're definitely gonna be in a bad spot. Yep. I mean like those are those are only plays Mazer Mouse, right? I don't think I don't think it's worth exiling a goblin. And, like, if they Lightning Strike Kaya plus Shock her, she then gained 7, which is just, like, an acceptable amount to have gained. So I want to exile one creature and a spell here. I don't get extra life for exiling an additional creature, and exiling a spell makes their future uh, Gitu Lava Runners worse. Worth noting that the way Planeswalker works, work, my opponent does not have a chance to Lightning Strike this Kaya before she goes to 4. If they have another Goblin Chain Whirler, this could be annoying because they could Lightning Strike her and then Goblin Chain Whirler to finish her off. I don't, I don't mind. I suppose the way this works, my opponent could Lightning Strike and then send both their Goblins at Kaya. And maybe that's not great for me. 
If they do, if they do that, do I blink my lumbering battlement and not put the the squire back under it to block both the goblins? I think that's the case. This is game three. You can always tell what game we're in by how many dots are filled in. So my opponent has one dot for one win, and I have one dot for one win at the bottom. So I think we're going to see both these goblins attack her. Yeah, normally we want to try and get like more value out of this card, but... So I'm gonna decline to put anything under the bus. Perfect. So this keeps Kaya alive. What's a what's a worst case scenario here now? They goblin chain whirler and then have a three damage burn spell to finish my battlement off. But I feel I feel like if they had Whirly Boy, they would have just played him pre-combat. Lava Coil's kind of annoying. Okay, interesting. So the fact that they were super aggressive with those makes me think they probably have another one, which does not bode well for us. I need to just play this out here and then pass. No, I've not heard anything back from my Tempo Storm rep yet, Quill Man. But I don't I don't think I'm gonna run ads today. I really didn't like doing it yesterday. It was tedious and annoying and we dropped off viewers every time I did it, so it does not seem worth. So if they attack with everything here, they kill Kaya. So the question then becomes like, do they have a three or four damage burn spell in their hand to finish off the battlement? If they have a three damage spell here and they attack everything at Kaya, I'm going to trade this for boss plus the, the burn spell. And then we're hoping to draw like any of our, our fours and fives would be good from here. Any, any of our game, game threes would be good. I agree. Even even Hostage Taker isn't a bad pickup. Just like Flame Tongue Kavu is decent. So she's dying regardless. I'm going to block here. I assume they're going to have a three damage spell to finish this battlement off. The way they used the Lava Coil aggressively last turn. Hostage Taker. Hostage Taker. Bell Haunt. All right. All right. All right. Well... And this, this is a free attack, right? I should have, I should have attacked with this before I played this even. Oh, we got Frenzy out of their hand again. Whew. Whew. Thank you for wanting to get the Phoenix into play, opponent. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Good. Clean living. All right, you called my bluff. Fine. You got me. And like, they don't even really have good attacks at this point, right? Because I'm at 22 and I have seven power in place. So if they want to like smack me with the Phoenix, they're not in a great spot. I wonder if I'm supposed to board in Contempt in this matchup. I don't know. Like, the, it's really expensive. The gain two is kind of okay, though. I feel like this opponent sideboarded in kind of a strange manner. Because, like, I guess Phoenix seems okay against me if they have it, but, like, Legion Warboss does not seem stellar against us. I guess, I guess they saw Kaya game too, which makes this a little weird as well. It's 
Did we play a bus game too? We did not. They discard two, we gain three. I mean, they don't know that we can't kill the Phoenix for good. Like, you're you're saying we can't kill the Phoenix for good from this side of the board with the knowledge that I'm, I don't have Raska's Contempt in my deck right now. Like, they don't know that. I also have, like, Kaya in my deck, which changes that dynamic as well. Yeah, it does, dear. Like, it feels like they saw our Esper lands and, like, boarded at, like we were Esper Control. Is it because it really doesn't matter at the end of the day, Singer? Don't don't spend a lot of time thinking about bluffs. It's just a waste of energy. Like holding holding one land is whatever. Never hold two lands. Uh, we are well past turn six. We are like double digit turns. I'm not attacking with all here because I don't think it's worthwhile to trade my bell haunt for all three of their creatures. I think I'd much rather just attack with the bus. Now, next turn, if they don't draw a creature, I have the clear to attack with everything. But I think it is not worthwhile to trade my bell haunt for the three creatures they have in play. Yeah, play, playing the seventh lands, that way we can eventually play Hostage Shaker and Hostage Shaker plus Cast Phoenix in the same turn is important. Deja vu. Look at that. We even drew the same crappy card for the turn. Feels bad, man. We've drawn 10, 10 lands and 20 cards. So a third of their draws have been lands. Half of our draws have been lands. Their, their deck also plays fewer lands than ours, almost certainly. Just feels a little bit bad that we haven't hit. We would have loved to have drawn, like, if one of these lands had been a memorial to Folly, that would be nice. I wonder if it's possible I should pack two of those into here. We only have one, right? I could maybe stand to be greedier and play a second memorial. Yeah, there's always, there's always asterisk, Mazer Mouse. Like, magic, magic's too complicated of a game to like. Have always, never type situations. So now we're going to be dead to a 3 damage spell. I think it's correct to not play around that though. I think I want to save the Mortify for if they just have blank so I can kill their creature and then kill them. Like obviously it sucks to get like lightning struck or whatever here but I think if they just attack with Phoenix I just take 4. Lava Runner changes the dynamic a little bit. Does it? I don't think it does, actually. I want to leave myself the ability to draw another removal spell and kill them, I think. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to three here. This way, if I draw a cast down a moment of creating or a Mortify, they die. Or Kaya. Hostage Taker, etc. The, the, the list of cards we draw that are lethal here are a Laundry. And, like, obviously they have, you know, half a dozen cards that kill us. So, like, yeah, now, now this is lethal. Because they have, if they have a way to interact with this at instant speed, they'd have killed us.
And they should know the jig is up because I didn't, uh, I didn't take their phoenix. I think, I think this turn sequence here was a good example of playing to win versus playing to not lose. I think, I think mortifying the phoenix there is playing to not lose, whereas giving ourselves the chances to hit our variety of outs to win the game the following turn is playing to win. And like, I'm like we talk about here, just because you make the right play doesn't mean you necessarily win the game. They definitely could have had a lightning strike or a wizard lightning or a skewer to kill us there, but I think I think it's right to do what we did. Let's get that. Let's get that fourth mortify back in our sideboard. Dive back on in here, shall we? Before we do, how are we doing, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody wherever you're at in the world. Thanks for dropping in here today. My name is Jeff Oakland. I stream full-time here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic 30, 40, 50 hours a week. If you are someone who enjoys standard best of three constructed, this is definitely a channel for you. We play a ton of different decks here. We change decks every 60, 90 minutes. So there's a lot of variety there. If you check out my uh, my website, you can find a deck queue up there that'll have the deck list for all the future decks that are listed in the stream title if you want to see what else we have coming up today. As always, I'd like to give a shout out to my wonderful subs. I wouldn't be here day in and day out without their wonderful support. So thanks to all of them for keeping me employed as always. I'd also like to plug a couple of my wonderful sponsors here really quick. Quip provides wonderful, affordable, quality electric toothbrushes. And if you check them out using my link bit.ly forward slash Google Quip, you'll get your first refill kit of a new brush head toothpaste and battery for free from them also if you sign in at that link using your twitch account when you make your purchase i will give you 25 points to bump a deck in my deck queue with that bcw supplies are the only ones you sometimes see me shuffling physical cards here in front of me they're the only ones i trust to protect my beautiful magic the gathering altars and all my other paper cards so you head over to bcwsupplies.com and using code jeff10 you can save 10 percent on all of your purchases there with them Cardsure.com will love to help you turn your cards into other cards restricted for the players. There's no haggling, and they just take 1% fee off the top. And of course, InkedGaming.com will love to help you customize your gaming experience. Using code JEFF12, you can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. You can upload your own custom work or choose from the wide range of artworks they already have on their website. Head on into our next ladder match here with the uh, the old Esper Bus. It's a deck we played a good bit of here on stream. It is a total hoot and a lot of fun. There is, there is a Kiki. So I kept, um, when I sold the majority of my Paper Magic cards, I kept my four Birds of Paradise that have painted borders, uh, one Court of Calling, one Kiki Jiki, one Restoration Angel. Just gotta, gotta, gotta remember where you came from, chat. Hydra Lord, thank you for the Twitch Prime support. Know there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. This hand's a little medium. I don't know, it's got a treasure map on too. Am I going to frame them? Yeah, probably at some point. I don't know. I might play them again. The Vanifier Core deck I've been playing. If I play a Paper Modern Tournament, I'll probably play them in paper. Steam Vents tap. They like Drakes with a slow draw. Phoenix with a slow draw, maybe. Like Walmart or Nordstrom quality. Uh, I don't own any Nordstrom clothes, believe it or not, so I don't really have a good a good metric for them. My my metric for the quality on them was I bought it and I put it through the wash a bunch of times. And the logo didn't fade, so I was happy with the quality. Uh, we have a couple of Vraska's Contempts in the sideboard, which we've not played previously. Looking for a removal spell here. So scrying here does mean I can't play the Bell Haunt this turn, but I think I'm okay with that. So they played an Enigma Drake, so this could still be the Phoenix deck. Not 100% sure which configuration they're playing here. Alright, I think I just draw here. I think I get the vampire going. 
This gives us a little bit of a health buffer. And then next turn, I can block plus Siren's Ruse to keep it alive. Yeah, I have some cards individually framed. Like my first SCG Open Top 8 was with a Sultai deck featuring Glissa the Trader. So I have a, a promo Glissa that's signed by Steve Argyle, the artist. That's in a frame. We're probably dead here. I'd assume even if I hit... I'd assume even if I hit removal at this point, they probably have protection. It's going to be a Lava Coil here. Believe it or not, it looks like we didn't really do much and then we died. Okay. Casting Discovery using the Black Source. Slick. Alright, well, we're not going to be dead on board, so you have that going for us. We've got huge tracts of land, chat. Maybe their hand is full of blanks and we're going to survive combat and we're going to untap and draw two removal spells and kill both their drakes and go on to win the game. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's unlikely. Ah, silly opponent. I've activated my trap card. So one of the things that can be confusing to newer players is that in Magic the Gathering, when a card changes zones, the rules consider it a new instance of that card. So when Siren's Ruse moves this Vampire Sovereign to exile and then back into play again, it counts as a new Vampire which means it's no longer being targeted by the Lava Coil. So this saves our creatures from removal spells. If it resolves, which it didn't and we are dead. These, these drakes have our very angry number. Cast down, Contempt. Uh, Kaya actually seems okay here. She's especially good at throwing the Phoenix plan, but otherwise she does shrink Enigma Drake, which is nice. Uh, Sailor of Means doesn't block anything meaningfully, so I think I want to trim down on those. It's a matchup where I trim some Bell Haunts. This might be a matchup where I trim Bell Haunt, right? Like, the three life isn't huge. The, the discarding a card is not that meaningful. This is a card quality matchup not a card quantity matchup so i care about specific cards not just them having a lot of cards i trim two of these and like one treasure map they're a little bit aggressive so drake's is is kind of what I would refer to as a gar the garbage one of the garbage collectors of this format. So it struggles to win against the decks that people accept that are good, like White Aggro and Esper Control and Sultai. But it's really good at cleaning up miscellaneous tier two decks that are trying to metagame those good decks, basically. So like what we're playing by no stretch of the imagination is one of the best decks in the format. So Drake's really tends to struggle in my experience. It's a lot of the decks that are very good in this format, but it's very good against all these miscellaneous fringe decks. And this format is wide enough and has enough fringe decks that something like Drake's with that descriptor can exist and be successful still. Man, that first match against Red was super long. We've been playing this list for almost an hour already. Land, please. Alright, well, we've got... We've got a lot of removal, which is good. Kaya's also decent.
They're just spinning their tires so far. Fortunately, so are we. You want to ditch this Kaya? You want my removal spells and my my creature bombs? Let's just move along to the next one. Be good. We could kick and struggle here for a little while, but we're not doing not going anywhere meaningful. We just we just ranked up to plat two, so that was our freebie, which is nice. Every every time you hit that next ledge, you get uh you get one free loss basically. So Kaya makes Enigma Drake not have power, but Kaya doesn't impact Crackling Drake, so like it's good against one of their threats, but not their others. Crackling. Crackling Drake explicitly looks at Exile as well. His hand's really bad. It's got it's got four non-foil cards in it. Double double bell hunt, double battleman. Getting set up for some goodies. Brood. Uh, I think I'm going to guarantee my fifth lands here. That's fine. Hope you're having a good day. I am, Mr. Payne. Hope you're having a fantastic middle of your week. Thanks for dropping in today. Yeah, I agree. The The Esper Hero deck that we have coming up today looks looks like a pretty reasonable mix of stuff. Which I'm excited, excited to give it a try after this one. The other Esper Hero decks we've played have been kind of middling, so I'm interested to see how that one feels. I'm not, I'm not bothered to treasure map because I just want to like cast my spells that I can cast and like even if I get the treasure map close to flipping the Bronthodon's probably just going to kill it. Ooh. Woo! Alright, so we technically... We technically have the combo set up here now. So Hostage Taker Double Battlement is infinite if they don't break us up in the middle. I'm gonna get this other Bell Haunt into play first though. Because once we once we put two Bell Haunts under the Battlement, they're really not gonna wanna kill that Battlement because it'll take two cards away with it, basically. Howdy Chalky. Not really looking for another land. Sure. It's an adorable 7-6. Have you met my friend? He's huge. Huge, huge tracks of battlement. That was that was the read the read the card pause like the the considerations of like what is taking this off the table mean for the game. Beep, beep. Uh, the basic potato. Thank you for the 10-month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Oh, no. All right. Their last card's a removal spell here. Oh, no. They've taken the bus hostage, chat!
Give it back, please. The adorable baby dino, yep. Everybody on the bus! Everybody on the bus! Load them up, move them out, Raha. Alright, if they draw a brick next turn, we go infinite. If they draw a brick next turn, we go infinite! Dang it, Bobby! Dang it! Why you have to be so mean? Why you have to be so mean? I just wanted to flip the bus and the flip the, the flip the floopy flop. <sighs> we did we did draw memorial, that's true. That's true. We did in fact draw memorial. So if they, if they break off again here, we do get to get them next turn. I just need, just need one of your, one of your finest bricks, please. Brick by glorious brick. All right. Refuel the bus. It is time, my children, and here we go! So, put this at the bottom. Everybody back on the bus! Everybody on the bus! Load them up, move them out. Do 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 Triggers. So now we get to draw as much of our deck as we want, gain as much life as we want, and make as many treasures as we want. Boshik, thanks for the seven months. I appreciate that. Welcome. So if this was a match of paper Magic the Gathering, I would explain to my opponent that I'm going to have an arbitrarily large amount of mana. Eventually, we would draw the vampire that drains my opponent out, and then we would break the loop up, because we can optionally break the loop whenever we want, and then you cast the vampire plus another battlement from your hand, and then get the loop going again with the vampire to drain them out. So that loop does actually end the game there in paper. On Arena, I think we'd run out of time before we get there, but we'd also draw enough cards and like gain enough life that it, we, we're still going to win. So that's why the opponent conceded. But we are actually infinite there, so we can like... And in, in Magic, the way it works in paper too, is you don't actually go infinite in Magic. You say, you pick a number. So we use the, the verbiage arbitrarily large. We'd say, I'm going to have a million treasure tokens. And I'm going to draw my deck minus two cards. And then I'm going to stop the loop, cast the vampire, start the loop again, kill you with the vampire. So, in this matchup, Cast Down is, like, strictly better mortified. They don't really have legendary creatures that we're worried about. Um, I don't actually think I really want to sideboard in anything else. I guess Frasca's Contempt is probably better than Mortify too, because Vivian can often be annoying. Viv Vivian can often be annoying. I'm going to trim a Seeker Squire, I guess. 
The rest of these cards seem reasonable. Let's do it. How do you how do you stop the loop? You stop the loop by when the bus has the bus and everything else in play, you just choose to not tuck a bus under a bus again. So the bus, it's always optional to to have riding the bus is always optional. So you just say, uh, no, thank you. I would like to be done riding the bus here. This is this is my board state. This is my health total. This is my this is my number of treasures. So if you if you noticed, every time I put the bus into play, I had to click on the creatures that I wanted to ride the bus. The bus is courteous and respects people's decisions to ride or not ride. Good morning, Lily. Always listen to your dad. He knows best. And your mom. Our, man our mana is a... Teensy bit painful this game. What's the best way to obtain a signature on my gestures cap? Uh, I have a P.O. box that you can mail stuff to. Just let me know when you've sent something there because I don't always check it. You said we could draw its way to the vampire and then cast the loop and start in. Yeah, so you start the loop again, the Rex, because when you draw your entire deck to get to the vampire, you draw another hostage taker or another bus, and you have unlimited treasure tokens. So you just cast them both, and then this the new the new bus or hostage taker gets the loop started again. Or a siren's ruse, yeah, that too. Lots of lots of ways to have everybody get back on the bus. Read. Think I need to cash this in as a gain four. Back the fact that I've taken eight from my man or six from my mana this game is not great for us. They had an aggressive start and we drew all shock land, so not really a whole lot we could do here. This uh this buys its turn. When I get to scry on my upkeep. Alright, so what I want to draw? 3-4 vampire? Probably want to draw a 3-4 Vampire. Raska's Contempt would also do in a pinch. Uh, Bell Haunt also not terrible. I think if our, think if our lands had dealt like 2 to 4 less points of damage to us that game, we probably would have been okay. But alas, we were not. Not sure exactly how much removal I want in this matchup. I feel like we can outgrind them a lot of the time. So like maybe leaving in more removal is the good conservative play just so we don't get run out in a game like that. I feel like most of the games I lose the salt time with this deck involve getting run out of the game as opposed to them outgrinding us. Uh, 
I mean, my lands don't deal me damage, I guess, but they also don't come into play untapped. Yikes. Well, at least at least we're on the play. That's just really scary to see, right? Because it's like, our, our start's slow and this is like their fastest possible. All right, at least it's only a 3-2. Seeker Squire, sign me up. Alright. Temple of Tilt. Temple of Tilt. Dee -dee 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 -bee 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 the fact that this is a 3 2 means that it can't attack through the Bell Haunt, which is good for us. It means I got to spend a removal spell on this. Get us a good clean 2 for 1. Yep. Untapped land, please. One of your finest untapped lands. Alright. Alright. Hopefully, they don't have cast down, so they have to choose between playing an explore creature and casting down and removing the bell haunt. Did the end. Okay, that's not the Stone Cold Bratwurst. I've got this contempt in my hand. Let's just get that out of there. They haven't played a blue source yet. They could, they could be sandbagging it. Yep. Yep. This means they don't have good attacks this turn though, so that's nice. Do we just get on the bus? I kind of think I want to just get on the bus, right? Take the Why do I care about the Wild Growth Walker? I think I want to just pile people on the bus. I think it's hostage. I either hostage take her the Krasis plus play treasure map or load up the bus. I think those are my two lines here. I could, I could take her the Krasis. If I take her the Krasis, how, how do I feel if they finality me? Do I care about finality next turn? I'm not sure that I do. The problem is like, if they go like, kill this plus play this, I'm kind of in trouble, right? I think I think I want to do this. This, this gives me more, this gives me more life. So like, I don't think I care about finality, but I think if I play the hostage shaker and their play is like, play Jade Light plus kill my hostage shaker, I end up in a pretty bad spot. Hey, Shmooly Poly, thank you for the prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you're at in the world. Why do you think Explorer was not played much before the rotation? Because the cards that were played played before the rotation were really busted. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, Fatal Push is pretty good too. Okie doke. We're infinite, chat.
We might we might lose this game because this is arena and not paper. But if this if this was paper, if this was paper, we would have guaranteed one. Because they they can't beat an arbitrarily large amount of life. But on arena, I might not be able to gain enough life before um before I run out of time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing this until my timer runs out. Or until they concede. Yeah. So again, in paper there, you would just say, I'm going to Graham's number for my health total. And I put it put it be like, yeah, okay, we're done here. It's like you can't deal that much damage before you deck out. Bell, bell haunting intensifies, right? That's a solid set. Just got to combo twice there. Graham's number isn't divisible by three. Elemental Whisper, thanks for the two month three sub. I really appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for shipping your Bezo Bucks back this way again. Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday wherever you're at. Hope everyone out there's having a great day. You know, magic's magic's a good time. There's a lot of a lot of wacky combinations of things. If you is it your first time watching this deck and you want to see more of it, I don't blame you. This deck's a hoot. Um my website, my YouTube channel have a ton of videos with this at this point. I think this is the fourth or fifth time we've played the Esper iteration of this, and we also played uh, Mardu party bus a few times as well with the old lumbering battlement. Pretty easy mulligan here. We've got one, two, three non foil cards in our hand, so I think we can do better than that. See? Only one non foil card. Told you we could do better. Whoop win. Howdy, howdy. This hand's missing black mana, but I kept Sailor because it makes it makes treasures, which eventually make black mana. There is no foil party bus available. This deck has someone made a big donation last week for us to play this deck and make every card in it possible foil, and the bus was not possible. What in the world is Raid Bob plus Thought Seas? It's uh the Three mana raid pirate that draws a card and you lose life alongside um, whatever that other card is called. The the thought sees thought sees I uh, thing. Thought sees adjacent thing. I think there's a good chance we're dead here. This matchup's probably hard for us. So it's definitely going to be hard when we have a hand like this without any removal spells. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, sorry. Focus. Focus. And like, if they're countering this, this means they have plenty more. So I'm going to go ahead and move along. Kai is very good here. Mortify is good. Duress is good. The old, the old 13 card sideboard plan. Just like we drew it up. So I actually think our, our party bus plan is not amazing here, believe it or not. This card. Actually, am I supposed to keep this in for the ramp? I'm probably supposed to keep this in for the ramp. Bell Haunt seems not very good. Have you seen the red two drop that cast instant sorceries from the graveyard? Do you think that'd be an acceptable submission in, in a Grull aggro shell? I don't know about Grull in mono red, probably, but Gr Grull tends to play more creatures than, than not. I 
think I just turn into like this mediocre control deck basically. A good question is if I am going to be a mediocre control deck, do I want treasure map? Like is is treasure map better than is treasure map better than like Siren's Ruse? It probably is. Hey, let's try it. Let's try this. Did I not put the latest on stream decker? Uh, it says it's up there, Azintoth. Weird. Strange. Alright, it should be good now. Uh, yeah, I mean, these both look better than Sirens. We're just the same skippable. Dale the Whale, thank you for the very generous tier 2 reset. Welcome back. And put the swamp over here in the ugly corner. Remember, my tier 2 subs support me a little bit extra, so be sure to take a peek at the deck queue and let me know which deck you'd like to see a little bit sooner. Would love to do that for you. I think, I think we're just on the kill the things with fire game plan here. So, again, Elemental Whisper, just because we're in spoiler season doesn't really mean the criteria for how we evaluate things changes. So, the question you want to ask yourself when you're looking at these new cards and saying, do these new cards enable an archetype that I want to exist to now exist? You got to ask yourself, well, what problems do those archetypes have? And how are those problems being addressed by these newly printed cards? And having played a little bit of blue-white control, in my opinion, the biggest issue that archetype seems like it has on the surface is that it doesn't have good flexible removal. So the fact that you're like trying to play like baffling ends and seal aways is blue-white control's biggest problem. And I don't think Dovin's Veto or the new Jace really address that problem. You have a question about a specific sideboard choice and a modern list on my website. I mean, you could ask now. Questions, questions are fine. So you're looking for hostage takers, mortifies, cast downs. Ways, ways to interact with this Jin. Map looking infinitely better than Sirens. Drews would have been here. Get that ugly swap off the board. It is, it is my greatest shame, chat. It is, it is my greatest shame. Debt-free life, my first pay finally came in from the new. Put this towards something sweet. Remember sweet, not good. What's going on, Bob? I think I'm going to play Kaya here as just a gain six, am I? Nah, I'm going to keep holding on to her. Might be able to do better. Might be able to do better. They've drawn two cards now. So good chance they have disruption for when I do find removal at this point. I don't know that moment's good enough. I think I need to dig deeper. You have a dive down. I don't think this works how they want it to work, but I don't know for sure. But I believe I can still cast this, right? Oh yeah, it's been a hot second since you've been around, Bob. The new the new foil cards are here and they are excellent. I think it's worth playing this as a game too. I think I think it's worth burning my treasures here to play this as a as a blocker to two. Mox Tangerine, thank you for the continued generosity with the tier two resub. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. 
And like now I get to stick this Kaya and start gaining life and they, they don't have the ability to pressure her, which is excellent. And again, grabbing one creature and one non-creature because I don't gain extra life for grabbing additional creatures and exiling instants and sorceries from their bin is valuable because it makes their terramanders worse. Yeah, Dijin only counts basic islands. That's this is this is the big reason mono blue doesn't splash colors. They're they're really well done, Bob. Rymal, keep up the great work. Can't wait for more cards to be spoiled. Me too. Once, um, so remember, even though I'm not writing weekly for Cool Stuff Inc. anymore, they left me a standing invitation to write when I feel like it, which is great. They're wonderful. Um, so I'm going to be, uh, probably writing a spoiler summary or highlights or things that I like once we have a, a little bit more things to churn through. Sam, Sam Pon, thank you for the brand new cheer one sub. Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. Thanks for keeping me employed here. In a situation come up last night playing this deck, I hostage taker with the trigger on the stack. I cast Siren's Ruse to flicker the hostage taker, but I only got the second creature I targeted. Yeah, that is that is completely correct, Greg. So hostage taker is a conditional trigger that says basically, if this card leaves play before this trigger resolves, the thing that it's taking never never leaves the battlefield and remember we talked about this earlier when a card changes zones in magic it's a new instance of that card within the rules of the game so once you once you blink the hostage taker like that it's a new hostage taker borderlands 3 has come out you know borderlands is actually one of the last shooters i played well before overwatch we still play overwatch occasionally but i have played a little bit of little bit of uh a little bit of borderlands they have they have native linux clients for that application so which is which is nice we don't get a ton of those <laughs> we don't get a ton of native linux clients god god bless wine Post-war standard sounds like you're talking about magic in the late 40s. Borderlands 3 is an epic store exclusive. Rude. What engine is it being written in, Derelict? Is it another is it another UT engine game or do they do something else? My wife says the same thing, and I don't think they made the same. Uh this hand is kind of slow, but I think it's got a, enough cards that are meaningful in the matchup that I'm supposed to keep, but I would not be surprised if we get run out. We would really love to draw one of our two mana pieces of removal. This is definitely a matchup where swapping that second cast down to the fourth Mortify is a pretty big downside. All right, so this is an interesting discussion. I think I would rather cast, bec because I have a three mana removal spell, I'm going to cast down on their turn because I think casting down on their turn makes the most likely chance that one of these resolve. If I didn't have a three mana removal spell, I would cast down immediately making them have the one mana disruption. Apparently I get to post this now. Wanted to just chat again. Well, thanks for the thanks for the support, Elemental. Why do you play a Singleton Abrupt Decay in the Green Black Rock and a Maelstrom Pulse in the main? What's the reason behind that? It's the things you want to hedge, Hostage Taker. So Maelstrom Pulse specifically hedges cards like Tefri or multiples of things, whereas Abrupt Decay is just another good two-mana removal spell, effectively. I, I'd bet I'd bet dollars to donuts, Bob. It has to do with the with the sound subsystem. The sound subsystem on Linux is pretty pretty miserable to work with.
Wow, Steam Charge is 30%. That's absurd. Decision on Mortify versus Kaya here. I think because they had two mana up, my spell is pretty unlikely to resolve. So I think I'm going to Mortify first because eventually I want the Kaya to resolve. Yeah, at the, at the end of the day, Hostage, if you expect more aggressive decks and less like, uh, less, what's it called? Um, less, um, I'm blanking on the name. Less, less Tefries, I would play, I would play the other one. So, more, people are talking about Mortifying the Obsession versus Dive Downing. If they hadn't already used a Dive Down, I would Mortify the Enchantment. But because they've already used a dive down, it's not as likely for them to have another, which I think means I just go for the threat. So it's a it's a percentage play, but because they've already used a dive down, the upside of getting the Tyramander off the table is much higher. <sighs> yes! Victory! No gamble, no future, chat. No gamble, no gamble, no future. Get him. Get out of here. If you knew for sure they played one less dive down than whatever is normal, would you do the same play? Yeah, probably. Didn't have it last turn. Whew! Whew! Ain't even, ain't even mad. Ain't, ain't even mad. Can't. Can't complain. We got we got the thing that was drawing cards off the table. Baby baby steps, chat. Baby steps. We're not we're not in a good spot here, but I really feel like we won the moral victory by taking the Terramander off the table. And at the end of the day, that's what's most important, right? It's all about it's all about the small wins. Rats. Silly, silly opponent being good at magic and not taking the bait on the Sailor of Means. Cor correctly identified my 1-4 for 3 was not what this game was about. Alright, I think Storm Tamer means this match is, this game is, this game is done and gone. We have the, they have the protection sitting on the table. We don't, we don't have any sweepers to draw to. All right, let's play. Let's load up on the bus one more time here. I think I think blue's probably probably the hardest matchup for this archetype because because our anti aggro cards don't have text here. Like our bell haunts aren't very good, and our other other tools of that nature are much less good. What kind of mathematician am I? Uh, one that plays Magic the Gathering. I have uh, I have a graduate degree in mathematics from Illinois State University that didn't really have a specific focus. I did a, my master's project was focused on analyzing um, graphs using the Network X library in Python, but nothing, nothing too fancy. Never, never had anything published. I had, a, I had a math with an education minor degree for my undergrad, student taught high school for a little bit, decided I didn't want to do that. Epethon, thank you for the Twitch Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. This hand just doesn't do anything, right? Like, the appealing aspect of it is it has all my colors. Did my opponent mulligan? Two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to keep because they mulliganed.
for people that are newer to magic and wondering on the logic there, it's less likely to be punished for keeping a weaker hand when they mulligan because them mulliganing implies that their hand is likely weaker than a good seven would otherwise be regardless of what they're playing that being said my plan of keeping a five lander and drawing some spells is so far not really coming to fruition Magic is an incredibly low variance game and the better player always wins. Never forget that. You know, and that one will keep you warm at night, I promise. Wow, feeling threatened by my 1-4. He didn't, he didn't mean you any harm, I promise, opponent. Listen, he wasn't going to do anything. <laughs> He's just an innocent sailor trying to get by in this cold, hard Espermere world. At least we have the superiority of all of our cards in play being foil. We've got, we've got that going on for us. It's going to slide this swamp over here into the ugly corner. These, these one ones that draw a card, gonna get them, gonna get them. Look at that! Look at all these spells in a row, chat. What a what a shameful non-foil treasure token. I feel I feel the shame as well. Oh, you know what? Someone cheered earlier and told me to go buy myself something nice, and we didn't we didn't make anything foil. We need to correct that after this after this match. Feel like feel like that needs to be corrected. We're probably solidly into garbage time here, which for those that are new to magic or haven't heard that sports ball reference before, garbage time refers to the game hasn't ended, but our opponent is basically in a position where they can't lose, so we should probably just move along. Is there anything left to foil? Yeah, I actually have a bunch of cards that aren't foil yet. I think uh, some Nox or someone did the math and they said it's like 800 bucks to fully foil. And I've only I've only put like two or 300 into foiling, so I've got a good chunk left to go still. Little bail haunt, just trucking along over here. All right. Can the sub gifts I gifted yesterday be used for foils? Of course, Dozer. You gifted a whole pile of them, right? If I if I recall. Yeah, Kai is not very good here. Yeah, make make some foils. Twenty is all right. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna make a bunch of shinies after this. I don't actually think this matchup's that terrible. So like, a lot of our creatures generate value, right? So like, our creatures are cards that like draw cards or make them discard cards or like tuck things underneath them to hide them from removal spells etc so while i think calling it a good matchup is a stretch i don't think it's like necessarily unwinnable i have all of the guild packs that's how the guild packs are how you get the foil shock lands you cannot get foil shock lands without the guild packs how do i feel about cutting all my mortifies in this matchup sure i feel about that hostage shaker isn't amazing they could board in creatures out of their side though i 
No, I didn't. I haven't heard back. I'm not running two minutes of ads today. Two minute ads today. My viewer count yesterday was really kind of mediocre. And we dropped, I went, I went back and looked at the graphs and it looks like we dropped more people than I realized every time we ran them. So, I'm waiting to hear back from my Tempo Storm rep, but I'm not sure how that all is going to work out. I really, really don't want to like spam my content full of ads. I don't, I don't know how the people that are going to expected to do six minutes are going to manage it. Even two minutes seems annoying. God of Flesh doling out the ability to talk to many, many new members of Hooglandia. Thanks for... Thanks for keeping me around, and I appreciate the support. They went on the full creature plan. Yep. All right, well, you can keep your Kaya's Wrath, because you got a bunch of creatures in your hand, so... Good luck with that. Perfect. Need to, need to run off a couple of lands here in a row. Fantastic. I guess that's a tapped land, technically, which is awkward. Mr. Rotten, thanks for cashing in your Bezo Bucks this way this month. I appreciate the support. Thanks for keeping me around. So, obviously, we're going to wait to scry till after the Thief hits us, because the Thief is going to clear cards off the top of my deck. And I think trying to fix my draw step for next turn is more valuable than trying to, like, hide one good card from their Thief of Sanity. I don't think I want one, but putting one just in case is probably a good idea. BM Go, thanks for the prime support. Welcome, welcome. See, that's why I don't really want to spam things full of ads. This this content's sponsored by you all already. Do we really need a pile of adverts? Seems seems not necessary. I'm gonna take my fifth land here. So, I'm going to, you'll notice I put a stop on my opponent's upkeep. The reason for this is, if they have a counterspell, I want them to have to use the mana for their counterspell on their turn. So that way it chokes how much mana they have available this turn cycle. So they basically didn't get to spend any of their four mana here. Volper, thank you for the entire year of support. I really appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Have a sword to go with your shield. Yep. Oh no, they're taking my map. Lord, that's brutal. That's incredibly unfortunate for us. Yikes. Alright, well. Kaya's Wrath looking pretty good here. It's looking like looking like the bus might be heading off a cliff here. Yeah, that's a good touch, too. I like that it has the card back, my card back on it still. It's a good attention to detail. Arena, The arena devs have done a really fantastic job of having a good attention to little details like that. This game's pretty over, right? Like, I... They have Kaya. They have my treasure map. If I put the Bell Haunt down, they discard this. And they have a Kaya's Wrath left over. Plus, this is a spell for me still. Let's, let's call this one a wrap and try one more before we're done for the day. With this deck. You got plenty of more good things coming up. We got Esper Hero, Just Kind of, and Grixis Pirates before we're all done for the day. Yeah, hostage, hostage taker, just so much value. 
hopefully we find like Sultai, Red Aggro, White Aggro. Those are the matchups that like like are pretty reasonable for this deck. Ugh. No, sub only chats enabled. Sub only, sub only chats not going anywhere. Oh no, our opponent just manually tapped. Yikes. Yikes! Why do you hate us? You were given the gift of speech from someone, Wolf Fighter. Listen, in the words of the greatest poet of our generation, sometimes you just gotta shake, shake, shake it off and move along to the next one, okay? Hostage, thanks for the tip. Whoop. Didn't know how much foils an arena cost, but hopefully this counts towards a zealot or bellhaunt foil. So unfortunately, this deck that we have has all of the foils in it. So not every card in Arena right now comes with a foil option. Um, I think I'm going to bottom that for now. Now nah, I'm going to keep it. I need a second white. How much to get the black green standard rock deck build around up into this week? Uh, yeah, 40 probably gets it done this week. Depending, depending on what other cuts we have today, that would actually probably get it into tomorrow. So today's Wednesday, so I'll probably play between 8 and 10 more decks this week for standard. Thanks, Hostage. I think it's worth it to use this treasure to activate the treasure map. Although, seeing that now makes it feel a little bit bad. So, now we have now we have to shock. Because, like, obviously, if I'm clairvoyant, I don't do that there. Because then we could have played a tap line and used the treasure to cast Bell Haunt. But, long term, flipping the treasure map sooner is valuable here. Hey, the boot. Thank you for the six months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Wow, that is another risk factor. Yikes. Looking for more cards that regain three life, hopefully. All right, that says... That says gain three here eventually. I think I just pass Chalky doling out some sub gifties. Thanks for the support. Hope you're having a good one. That's for uh
for the Bob Thought Seas, I assume. So, do I want to blink the Bell Haunt now is a good question. I think I do. I think I want to just give them less choices. I think I just cast this as a gain three, you discard a card. No, thank you, God of Flesh. I appreciate the support. <clears throat> so if they have a land, they can double risk factor this turn. Tucking both under this bus might have been greedy. Tucking both under the bus might have been greedy. There is no Bellhorn fail. The bus has every foil available. So I think I'm going to start with this and see where we go. I'm going to do this just in case I draw another bell haunt. And then I think, I think I'm just hostage takering my lumbering battlement here. Which makes another treasure. They discard a card again three. Yeah, I, I think eventually they'll have most things available in foil, especially seeing how successful their initial batch are. Like we've been saying for a long time, Arena isn't a beta because it's buggy. Arena's a beta because it's feature incomplete. I am fairly, fairly certain that they are nowhere near being done with all the things they want to have done in Arena. And I, I'm just going to take eight here because if I draw a hostage taker or a battlement, we go infinite next turn. What meta changes do you see coming with war? Unlike a lot of people who like to pretend they can predict the future, I'm not a big fan of doing that. So, I'll talk about things that I think might be possible once we have a full spoiler, but until we have a full spoiler, it's really just like trying to predict the future, which is just not possible. Like, we can't, we can't even make educated guesses right now because we just don't have all the information. Like, educated guesses can be somewhat interesting, but, like, right now they're not that. Or is your last card a burn spell? What you got? We had two draws at six cards to infinite combo them. If we don't die here... Hey, am I dead?
So, this might be a bad hedge, but I think because we saw Risk Factor and Rick's Maddie, do we do we think they play those cards and still play Experimental Frenzy? Yeah, yeah, I did Deep Rinse. You can find it on the YouTube channel. We played it uh, Friday night. I'm going to go 3-1 here. If I knew they're on Frenzy, I would play all of these and no contempt. But I think there's a chance that they're not on. That they're not on Frenzy with the other cards they're playing. Uh, it was kind of mediocre, Deep Prince. The deck plays a lot of individually weak cards that uh, really don't meet the legacy power level. So I know this hand was incredibly speculative, but if this hand draws two to three lands in a row, it basically, it likely can't lose. And that's how you want to measure should you take risks during mulliganing. You want to ask yourself not only... What are the chances that I get paid off? But how good is the payoff if I hit it? And I think my chances of hitting lands with this hand was far more likely than my chance of having a hand on five. That is good. That's true too, Marty. If this had been the London Mulligan rolls, we'd have snapped it off. I think I want to shock this in to play the Bell Haunt because I think I want to save this treasure to play five drops in case I don't hit my four, fifth land on time. Which we're getting we're getting very paid off here. Rock, thanks for the 12 months of support there. I appreciate it. Have a sword to go with your shield. Well, they did it pre-combat, Marty, because apparently they don't want my Bell Haunt to trade for their Chain Whirler. So by doing it pre-combat, it means if I block, I can't kill their thing. So I think I think I just take three here, right? Like I have another game three in my hand. Alright, now that I hit this extra land guaranteed, I'm going to do this. I think it's worth burning the treasure to save two points of life here. Yeah, I agree. I think this card's great. I think it's very good against aggro. The small amount of tempo it generates from putting you ahead in a lot of different positions tends to be very powerful. That's a Siren's Ruse. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's two years before we can correct you on pronunciation. You can, you can correct me now... But I'm not gonna make an effort to really try until two years, because it's gotta be. It's got. I gotta. I gotta know that you're here for the long haul, before I like double down and learn how to pronounce things properly. Hmm. 
They are playing Frenzy. Okay. Why not swing before the bus? Because I don't want them to double block my three fours with their first strikers. Oh, the vampire flies. This is why you should be specific. Yeah, you're super right. The vampire attacks free. I didn't make the good play because I'm dumb. Or I didn't see it. Dealer's choice. Rob! It should just be Rob. I can I can remember that one. That's that's a super easy one. I got you. All right, everybody on the bus. Everybody off the bus. Oh no, I stacked my triggers wrong. Oh, that's so unfortunate. I don't have, I, I forgot. Oh, arena. Oh, arena. Oh man. That sucks. So I, sh I should be six points of life higher here. If these, if these stack in the other direction. All right, sweet. We hit, we hit infinite, so it doesn't matter. We hit infinite, so it doesn't matter. All right, so they're, they're dead. So the bus comes into play. The bus is going to exile these three things. We get to exile the bus. Yeah, so the vampire drains them out. They are playing risk factor, which I get our experimenters, I guess, shouldn't be surprised. Like, I'm gonna bring the last mortify in instead of being cheeky. Um, I really like Teamer Domri, as well as the climb style decks that I played against Esper. The the thing you have to understand is that. Esper Control is playing such a collection of powerful cards that when it's drawing its answers and having everything line up well, it's basically unbeatable. So when things are going right for Esper, you basically can't win. But thankfully, the Esper deck, you know, name a more iconic duo, duo Esper and Mist Land Drops, Esper and, you know, Missing a Color, etc., etc., yeah, I agree. The The frequency at which this configuration manages to go infinite is, is very pleasing. This hand is a little bit on the slow side, but I think Sailor into Bellhaunt's definitely a keep. No, no one drop out of the opponent is fantastic for us. I want to get take this deck to FNM so I could just say get on the bus loudly every time I go off. Wow, their hand is mediocre. Mortify means we're covered if they experimental frenzy, which is nice. I'm not blocking here because I don't want this to die to another Chain Whirler post-combat. Nah, I'm just playing casually. I, I realized at the end of last season that the amount of variance involved in getting to the top 1,000 I found incredibly frustrating, and I found myself not having fun playing Magic. 
And as I, as I like to say on stream a lot, if you're ever playing Magic and you find yourself not having fun, you should immediately reassess what you're doing and why you're doing it. We did not craft the foils yet. We're going to do that after this match. We don't know yet, Pirate. They have not, they've not shown us what the lands are going to do. Yeah, I think we're solidly ahead here. The red deck's only catch-up mechanic from a board like this is Experimental Frenzy, and Mortify means I have that covered. I'm, I'm a lot more lenient on people using the chat as Google since we went to sub-only mode, right? Y'all pay to be here. And that's, and that's one of the upsides of, like, being sub-only mode, right? We can afford to have more clutter in the chat because there's just less chat overall. I'm going to use this as a gain three. I don't think I want to use this one as a gain three, though. It's possible I should have... Do I, do I just, like, take a Chain Whirler here? I think I do. I think, I think that's the line. They could have a Burn Spell here. If they have, like, a Lightning Strike, they could stop us. But, like, that's a Lightning Strike that's, like, going at my Hostage Shaker and not going at my Dome or finishing a Bell Haunt, so I think that's fine. Yeah, I agree, Dunk Daddy. Also, like, if you just want to, like, especially if you want to, like, pseudo, even if you're not just strictly free to play, but just, like, want good value, once you hit Mythic, if you're capable of hitting Mythic, winning, going, like, 4-2 and 5-2 in the Constructed events is pretty easy to do consistently. All right, let's start with the love taps in the air here. The the Siren's Ruse means if we find another Hostage Taker or, God forbid, a, a battle bus, we are going to destroy them. All right, this is an excellent draw. This, these actually, these are actually Lightning Helixes too with the Vampire, right? So, like, these kill them two turns sooner. How do I put a stop inside of damage? Do I have to enable full control mode? This combat went really well for us, huh? I should have I should have left this back probably. I think we're, think we're good. Holy crap, we're gonna die. Holy crap, we're gonna die. Oh no. Oh no. 
Why does red draw so many cards, chat? Stop, please stop. Please stop. Please stop. I was sweating a little bit there at the end, Chad. I was, whew, things were, they were things. That game was not supposed to be that close on that last turn. That was it was not, was not supposed. I was not supposed to have to sweat at the end. We were supposed to just be solidly, solidly ahead. Um, all things considered, I like this latest configuration of the party bus, and I think it's uh, super reasonable. If you're looking to have have a solid meme time, I would encourage you to. Uh, to check it out. All right, uh, we had people donate for lots of foils, so let's foil some cards here, shall we? What are what are cards we play a fair bit of that we would like to foil? We're probably gonna play plenty of Clarion. Let's foil that one. I just want to foil format staples. Are we that guy? Do we foil the Tefri? Do we do we foil the, I almost feel like I'm not supposed to foil Tefri on principle. <sighs> I'll do cleansing Nova. I feel like Just Kai control is probably gonna be okay in the next set. So I'm gonna foil I'm gonna foil Nova. A fight with fire looks absurd. Let's let's do that one. All right, what else? Esper, Esper hero. What does this have? Is have anything that needs to be foiled still? Disinformation campaign. That one's kind of trippy. I already, I already have a beautiful duress. Stop it. Hey, dude light. Thanks for the tip. Foil the Tefri. We got you. We got you. Let's just go to the generic collection. Click it. What are, what are cards we play with some consistency that would be good? Be good foils. Ooh. We play angels some amount. That one looks that good in foil. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that one. The party bus does not have a foil available. The rest of my angels are foils, so let's do this one. We do play some amount of a Johnny. Alright, we'll do we'll do some Ajani. History does not have a foil available. Rekindling is foiled, yep. Let's filter rares and mythics. That's mostly the most of the constructed playable stuff, right? Mm, the search for ice gants is probably a good investment. We're gonna, we're gonna get some miles out of that one. Takatli goes in a lot of places. All right, I've got three thousand more. Nug Jug, thanks for the thanks for the seven months. I appreciate that. All the all the angels cards should probably. Oh, there was there was baffling end, wasn't there? We play a lot of this card. The Mass Manip does look good, but we don't really play this card in a lot. Um, this card, you can't purchase. It's going to be a ranked reward. So we'll get that. We'll get that at the end of the season. What crappy green cards do I like? We have most of the crappy green cards I like, actually. 
Steam Kid. Steam Kid's a good one. Uh, we have Land War Elves already. Hey, have 1,500 chat. That's like one more. I've only got, I've only got one more. You gotta, gotta think very carefully here. I do, I do like Grawl Aggro. I do like Grawl Aggro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Grawl Spellbreaker. I'm gonna do this one. I don't think that Bolas is very good. The new Bolas will be sweet. I'm gonna do Spellbreaker. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. We spent, we spent all of our dollar dues. dues Spellbreaker. Spellbreaker's a good looking, good looking one too, right? It's got the shimmer, good shimmers on it. Good shimmers. Good shimmers. 